I have been using iPadOS 26 for almost a full week now, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my full experience of using iPadOS 26 on my M4 iPad Pro, which is my main productivity machine. Now, obviously, since it is beta software, I am experiencing quite a bit of bugs and glitches here and there, but overall, the experience has relatively been smooth. And when I made the switch from my MacBook to the M4 iPad Pro last year, I did a lot of videos going over that experience. Now, in a lot of my videos, I did say that the Mac and the iPad are two different experiences, and they're meant to be two different experiences. One is supposed to be a full-on you know, productivity powerhouse, which is the Mac, and the other is a modern-day computer that is made for versatility and a touch-first optimization experience. And now I can say that more than ever before that with iPadOS 26, the iPad can be a full Mac replacement for not everybody, but for most people. And I'm going to share my thoughts on why I exactly believe that very shortly. But in today's video, I'm also going to go over some things that I really wish iPadOS 26 had that I've been wanting for a long time. But first, let's talk about the new enhancements made to iPadOS 26. So first, let's just quickly talk about design, which brings you an all new look and feel with liquid glass. And when you're using the iPad on a daily basis, this new look and feel really gives it a more vibrant and delightful way of using the product. At first, I'll be very honest, when I was using this new liquid glass you know, design, I didn't find it to be a huge difference between this one and the previous one, but it's only when you go back to a device that's not running iPadOS 26, and that's where you're like, wow, this feels so much more modern, and the one that's not running iPadOS 26 feels just dated somehow. But now let's put the design aside and focus on the all new productivity features that are really, truly enhancing my workflow. And the number one thing on the list is that Apple is taking multitasking next level with iPadOS 26, because finally you get proper windowing. You see, the iPad initially started as a single task device where one app takes up your full screen. And over time, you got features like slide over and split view, which made it possible to work with more than one app at a time. And I'm not gonna lie, those features were relatively decent, but when you would compare it to the multitasking on a Mac, it felt very subpar. Then over time, Stage Manager was released and that further improved usability as you finally got more flexibility with your windows and sizing of the applications. But once again, it was still a poor substitute of how multitasking is done on a Mac. And all of that changes with iPadOS 26 as you get proper windowing and full control of the sizing of your applications. And to be very honest, it feels exactly like it does on a Mac now. You can open up multiple different applications, position them differently, size them differently, and even overlay each window as you want. But you do have a cap of 12 apps at a time on one screen. To be honest, 12 applications is a lot to have open at one time on a single screen. Even when I would use a Mac, I think I'd rarely if ever had 12 different programs or applications open at once. And what I really enjoyed was this nice quadrant mode where you have four applications open at once with each app taking up equal space on the display. This is all done thanks to these new controls that are completely brought from the Mac. And those are the traffic light icons where you have the red, yellow, and green circles just like you do on a Mac. The red one is to close an application, the yellow is to minimize the application, and the green one is to change size and orientation of the application. So rather than you manually having to, you know, change the orientation or the sizing of the, each application, you can now do it with a single click with that green button, which gives you a lot of different options to choose from. Multitasking feels exactly like it does on a Mac, and that alone is something that takes the iPad next level. But another thing that Apple has brought from the Mac is the menu bar. From a usability standpoint, there's really no better interface for accessing features that aren't front and center. And I believe Apple's approach before iPadOS 26 was to just keep everything minimal and clean. And I get that, right? But at the same time, from a usability standpoint, it also makes things a little more frustrating and difficult because you have to browse through different shortcuts through your magic keyboard, or you have to make numerous taps on the screen to you know, accomplish a certain task. But now with the menu bar right there, front and center, when you hover on the top part of your iPad, it just magically pops up with all your shortcuts and tools to choose from. And it just works flawlessly. And it almost makes you wonder, why was this not on an iPad to begin with? And I was watching an interview with Craig Federighini and he talked about differentiating the Mac and the iPad, yes. But if there are certain elements that are just working really, really well on a Mac, then it can definitely be brought over to an iPad. And that's exactly what they did. And yet the iPad experience and the Mac experience are obviously still very different, 
but at the same time, they do share more similarities than ever before now, and I think it only makes the operating system for the iPad way more advanced. Another major upgrade is that Mac style drag and drop is finally here. So transferring content between apps and windows used to be a frustrating mess on the iPad, but not anymore. And on top of that, file management also got a much needed boost. You can now drag folders to the dock, label them with symbols for quicker recognition, customize list views, and even choose default apps for different type files. You also get a preview app, which really improves the experience of managing PDF files and editing them. You also get a journaling app for the first time ever, which should have been on the iPad from the very beginning of the launch of the journal app, as it just makes sense to jot down your notes and thoughts and journaling with the Apple Pencil in the large canvas of the iPad display. So we're getting these great applications. We're getting these great enhancements and features. And to be very honest, I'm very happy with iPadOS 26 but like I said in the very beginning of the video, there are some things that I really wish it had. And if it had those things, then I can fully say that yes, the iPad is a full Mac replacement. And I'm gonna go over those things with you right now. The first thing is a clamshell mode. So when you hook up an external monitor to a laptop, the desktop appears on the external monitor in the laptop display. Then when you close the laptop and enter clamshell mode, the desktop only uses the external monitor. But when you do that on an iPad, it shuts the power off to the device and stops everything. Come on, Apple, let me be able to just close my iPad like this and still have it function on an external monitor. Once again, clamshell mode is something that Apple is just refusing to bring to the iPad. The next thing I really wish Apple brought was support for plugins. You see, when you're using a lot of great pro applications like Adobe Photoshop or Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro, you do have those applications on here. And yes, they're slightly watered down, but there's so many great plugins that you can get for the Mac that really takes your editing experience next level, but you just can't get those plugins to download on the iPad. It just doesn't make sense to have pro level applications come to the iPad, but then still have a watered down experience and the lack of plugins. Because for example, when I would edit videos on a Mac, I could get all these great plugins that would really enhance the style of my video edits. Maybe I could add more animations and transitions that I just can't download and import into Final Cut Pro on the iPad. And lastly, another thing that I really wish Apple would bring to the iPad is true multi-user support. Because you see an iPad doesn't require the same level of personal ownership as an iPhone. In fact, in many families, kids and parents share iPads. It just makes a lot of sense if Apple would allow different users to use the iPad using their own password or account. Because at the end of the day, Apple is trying very hard to make the iPad more Mac-like, but a Mac also supports multi-users, right? Even for example, when you use an Apple TV, even with that, you have multi-user support so anyone can log in with their information and access all of their content. This iPad Pro, for example, is $1,400. And the fact that it, someone wants to use my iPad and just check their emails or their content, and I can't just give it to them to do that, it kind of makes things cumbersome. I get that they don't wanna have a multi-user support with different account IDs and stuff, but at least have a guest option where, you know, if I wanna give this to someone just for them to browse the web, my personal details and information don't show up. They can just use it as a guest, just like on a Mac, you have a guest mode. And when they log out, all their information is out of the system as well. I think that would have been really, really nice. But at the end of the day, overall, I am super happy and impressed with iPadOS 26. I truly believe that after using it for a week, it has improved my workflow. It has taken multitasking next level. And with all these great enhancements and features with the preview app and better file management and the menu bar, and I'm loving it. And once again, I'm just on beta one, right? So there's going to be plenty of betas that are going to come from now all the way till the release this fall. So there's a huge chance that we're going to see even more enhancements uh, that might pop up from now and then. But overall, I'm really liking it. And I feel like now more than ever before, people can jump to an iPad for a true computing experience and actually really, really love it. Once again, this is not a Mac replacement for everybody, but it is for most people. Of course, if there are certain programs and applications that you're using, especially if you're into programming and coding like my wife, then yeah, a Mac is the best device for you. But I think for the average consumer, especially those in the creative fields, they're really, really going to like the iPad, especially with iPad OS 26. What do you think about iPad OS 26 and the iPad in general? Do you think it's time to finally replace the Mac with an iPad? Or do you think that's just not where the future is headed for you? Whatever thoughts you have, whatever questions you have, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.